maybe get just a new one on here. Yeah. When I first heard the demo, I absolutely fell in love with the song. I mean, I, I'd heard everything that you'd kind of sent, and you know, obviously Matt knows your music really well, inside out. Him and Ben, you know, have been fans for years and stuff. And then when I kind of heard all of those things, I hear things in a different way to kind of Matt, I suppose. I, I, you know, without, it's just the way we are, isn't it, Matt? And then I heard Undertow, and I just said to Matt, I want that song. That mm -hmm. one, that that song is it, it. It strikes so many chords with me musically. I just I I could hear it kind of finished as soon as I heard the song, which is always a really kind of that means that you know that means it's a great tune to work on. So um, I mean, I remember we toed and fro, didn't we, a little bit at the beginning, just slightly, and then we organised a call. Uh, yourself and I and I, I said I, re I remember talking to Matt before our first call Lee, and I said um, all I can hear is bagpipes you know how do you think how do you think how do you think Lee's going to take that and Matt was like yeah, obviously you know d there's an element of batshit crazy about me anyway but he just went well just like just tell him you know so I kind of said to you I remember that first call first time we spoke about Undertow I just said look when you hit that vocal bridge, because it goes into D, I just hear uh, Irish bagpipes. And, and, I, and I, I remember sitting here thinking, this is either going to work out really well or really badly for me. But you just went, yeah, like an Irish funeral, I get it. And that was like, that, I think that was the best of the song from that point production wise. such a sad lamenting song and and I, I mean i grew up with all sorts of kind of i mean being british we we grow up with the pokes and things like that so you know we're always exposed to the irish music anyway um and yulian pipes are keyed in d as well so that bit where it hits that vocal bridge because it because it go it's in d it, the first cause is the d so i just hit those yulian pipes like being quite triumphant there you know, it's almost the save my, you know, my damned souls part, isn't it, really? So I think that was kind of the, the start of the idea that we kind of discussed, really, which I think kind of worked well. I mean, what, what are your thoughts? When, when, you, when I said it, you must have thought, yeah, well, you, A, he's batshit crazy, or B, he's batshit crazy, but he might be onto, or B, he might be onto something. <laughs> <laughs> You know, from the moment I you said bagpipes, I heard the I heard it too, and I said, "Wow, yeah, yeah that's that's going to be cool." Uh, it, it's it captures a moment and a feeling, and it's uh, it, the the music and the words and you know what I wrote and what you came up with the arrangement just go together so well. So it was it was all there, and I didn't have a doubt in my mind. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I mean, it's not something you would traditionally think country music or, you know, outlaw country or whatever. You wouldn't think, yeah, bagpipes, that'll fit. But, you know, with production, it's more about the song itself and how you kind of put the emotional kind of tapestry of sound together, I think. So, I, I mean, I, I remember I was having a conversation with Chuck about strings because... But like when I grew up, I, my, my uncle used to play me lots of old records. So he used to kind of sit on his knee and fall asleep on his knee. And he used to play me things like, like the Kinks and Moody Blues and, you know, all sorts of stuff. Led Zeppelin, these kind of things. But the Moody Blues, I really loved the Moody Blues. And they were very good at strings. You know, they obviously had, you know, good classical arrangers working the strings for them. And then that bit leading into the bagpipes, I just heard those kind of you know, big sweepy moody blues type strings 
again and that really suits that and when it goes back out again into that kind of little tiny kind of more legato bit after the triumphant bit you know regarding the undertow you know just putting those big sweepy moody blues type strings in as well i think that kind of because it makes you feel sorrowful that technique that you were talking about, the frozen string technique, that really brought a lot to the table as far as the grittiness and in, in that yeah. supporting the grittiness of the of the song overall, you know, in the strings. It wasn't too too clean. It was it was that frozen string kind of technique. Yeah, I mean, I because I, I, my my you know my background. Obviously, because I came from a classical background, and then got into kind of music, music, and then into studio recording music and then got into dance music and that experimental dance music thing still lives inside me so i kind of like any weird technique that anyone in 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 the world is trying to kind of use i always i'm always like a bit intrigued by it but lots of the classical guys in scandinavia they they do this thing with it's called frozen strings so it's a string technique and it's a recording technique kind of mixed in and they just sound really like harsh and weird in a Scandinavian way, you know, but very cold, you know. So the frozen string analogy is quite cool. But, you know, with that kind of undertow thing, that, you know, this whole, you know, the ocean and whiskey and drinking and you're lost at sea and you're never going to get found. And, you know, it's that kind of, it needed something cold and and detached and and lost you know so i think those frozen strings you know i played the track earlier it was funny i dug it out i mean what is it like four months ago we worked on it and i dug it out earlier and had a listen to what because obviously what i'd done i'd done quite quickly and i listened to it today and i was just like yeah they're like you know they're quite stark and kind of you know punches you in the chest and rips your heart out and beats you over the head with it, don't it? Which is kind of the point, isn't it, really, of the song? Yeah, so. I think a couple of things on the song, on those bits that jump out, is like those bagpipes, because like the vibrato in the bagpipes is quite deep, that it almost has, it almost pulls, like in the solo, there's like a real, like, couple of discordant notes that make it really sad. There's like, That's just an accordion. It just yeah, yeah, playing yeah. two notes. I yeah. played that to Chuck. Like, it, it yeah. was, it, I just heard, like, it's yeah. French, isn't it, basically? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, the, 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 because the vibrato is large, it almost has a, a kind of a discordant, flattened feel to it, which most people would always go for a sharp to make it be more, huh, and it actually goes, uh, you know, like, like, uh, it like makes it grittier and dirtier in the way that that, that sound, because it's, it's got quite a large EQ, um, you know, so far as it's it's quite, it's it takes over a lot of space. So you mean frequencies, the frequency range. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, it, it just waves over the whole thing. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty. Yeah, neat. it was funny. I, when I was listening to it earlier, because I, you know, I kind of, I, I do things and then don't kind of look back. Really, I, it's not my thing. You know, I don't. I, it, once I've finished it, I probably never listen to it again. <laughs> just kind of move on. But I, I, I dug it out again today. I've got it on the thing behind me, and and it was really those like those those bagpipes in the vocal bridge and then the strings that kind of join them together either side because it's quite a classical string movement that kind of knots it all together and then takes it back out and you kind of don't notice it in the mix you know if you listen to it solo i probably might actually might plug that bit in here like but if you listen to them solo the strings and the bagpipes are the bit that kind of, I suppose, support what your what your lyric is and what your intent is and what your meaning is. Because music, you hear so much music that's, you know someone's just sat there and penned it and just gone, yeah, that's great, that'll do, and whatever, and there's no heart in there. You know, loads of modern music's like that. It's just, it's McDonald's disposable, isn't it? it 
you know, once you fear it, you forget it. And then if they just keep banging it into your ears, you'll remember it. But then after another <laughs> week, you'll forget it. You know, whereas old, great music, you remember it forever, don't you? I mean, Chuck and I had this dus- discussion. You know, that, that good music is like the soundtrack to your life. It's mm-hmm. those songs that hit you deeply and mean something to you. And in 20 years, you'll remember exactly where you were when you first heard it. That's what music should be. An undertow was that song when I first heard it. I mean, I know you've got a ton more songs, and I know we're talking about working on a lot of different songs, but I think undertow just struck those kind of really painful chords in my heart, you know. And 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 I think you know it, it, it deserved that kind of, I suppose, for want of a better phrase, kind of meticulous, kind of almost classical arranging around it. And I know that's not really a country thing, you know, being, being a Brit and that, but it, but it it's it's what's right for the song, isn't it? it, it you know, the, the song deserves whatever whatever it takes to make it emotionally what you kind of put into it. So I think yeah, yeah it was. goes back to something before they came up with the word country to describe it. You know, it's all the people can't really describe country music, but I'd say it's as country as it gets, just because it's. It's a, a it's a three it's a four chord song set to a waltz with yeah, class three, four with class folk instruments on it. I mean, what is more country than that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I I I love country music. You know, my wife's a big country fan. We listen to a lot of country music in our house. You know, like the George Jones and everything. Like we we literally you know listen to it every week. Country music. So I I kind of. I know country music, but I've never actually worked on country music because it's always been, you know, like either rock music or dance music or pop music or punk style music. I, you know, being British, it's not kind of country isn't really a, a, a thing you grow up with in England, is it really? Apart from obviously Dolly Parton and Kelly Rogers and all those old classics and stuff. You know, we grow up with, you know, Led Zeppelin and yeah, yeah the, cl- the closest music thing to and... country we the closest thing to country we have here would be folk that's brought in yeah, into like Fleetwood Mac and stuff. Yeah, but also you get bits of folk music bleed into the Clash or bits of folk music bleed yeah. into Turner or various you know contemporary rock artists. So we have this country folk thing, and folk music is one of the influences on country music, but we don't have the other bits. You know, we don't have the the the, the, the Latin or the Mexican feel that goes into country music. We don't have any of that over here. So it's just we've only got bits of of, of the core of country, which is from folk. So we come at this from yeah you know, from a but country music. Yeah. But isn't country music kind of based on folk anyway? It's based on all of those kind of roots bits of music, isn't it? I I, I was I was sat in the garden nearly with the kids drinking wine as you do um, and, and listening and listening to rod stewart and like because I, I i my first instrument weirdly was classical guitar even though i don't call myself a guitarist but i learned classical guitar and i was listening to maggie may and the intro to maggie may is kind of based on like a 12th century uh, piece of music have you are you familiar with maggie may by rod stewart yeah, I know the part you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, huh. Maggie, I think. It, but the the intro to it is a is a classical nylon string guitar part based on a 12th century folk piece of music. I was like, I haven't ever noticed that before. <laughs> you know, but everything's derivative from somewhere, isn't it? And, and I suppose that's kind of like you know we're. In Britain, we kind of come from all that old the English music and classical music and all the European stuff like Bach and Mozart and all that kind of thing. And then out of all of that, we came up with the Sex Pistols and Led Zeppelin and, uh, you know. And it, but it's all kind of part of the same thing, isn't it? So surely, you know, it, it's all part of the same, you know, we all use the same notes. Yeah. yeah. And, and similar instruments, guitars or drums or, or fiddles or whatever, you know. I think the fiddle part in Undertow was really important as well. Like, cause that kind of holds it through the verse into the classical bits. If you notice it, if you listen to it, there's just like a soulful little fiddle line that kind of goes into the more classical strings, then into the bagpipes and then kind of out with classical strings. And that little fiddle part just kind of connects them all together, I think. But 
I love the fiddle part, man. I like the uh, the way it comes in on the intro. You know, the song. Yeah. The, it, the song definitely captures something that is like the ocean and just yeah. it has ebb to it. Yeah, well, it, yeah. I remember that conversation I had with you. I said, "We, you know, I'm from England. We're like literally, we've got 40 square miles of land and about a thousand miles of coast. It's just yeah. like we're a tiny island with like tons of ships and coast and boats and stuff." So. But it's really cold, so we don't have the beach. Yeah, really cold and rainy. So really good for the song, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I felt right at home. I felt right at home hanging out with you guys up there, out there. It was. Yeah. It was I think we want to come over and like you know experience like that. You know. Anytime, anytime. The please. American city. I'll, I'll wear a hat and cowboy boots. Like, <laughs> All right. Most of my friends are from the states. And like Jimmy, like because I, I was meant to like you know I grew up befriended Jimmy before he died. Jimmy Miller before he died. He was the coolest dude. He's a New Yorker, but he was like a coolest dude ever. Yeah, he'd have been like, yeah, hell man, yeah, get over there. There was there was one thing I wanted to mention was when we first heard the first demos, the solo was all guitar, and then you decided to split that so that it was slide. It was um, it was it was the steel steel lap guitar to then go into like the the Gibson. So. What was the what was the thought behind behind the change of that? Who hey, me? Yeah. Well, I, I, I mean, I, I I had the discussion with Lee about that, and I kind of because it sounds old. This song doesn't it? It's got a very old sound to it. You know. So you, what you have to do is you have to treat it with a bit of respect. The tune when you're recording. So, like George, who I work with um, on everything, basically. Because George's background is in Abbey Road, and he's Explain done his. George, uh, George Schilling, did you? Yeah. So yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So yeah. So like George. George is a renowned, like world-renowned record producer. But me and him work together on pretty much everything. I've known George since I was twenty-two. Like we've been friends ever since, you know. And we always work together. And and I said to George, what we need to do is make this sound very old. You know, we'll have to record it all. So like the desk that we recorded on in the studio that that used to belong to radiohead that neve desk that vintage neve desk so we used old newman valve mics we used all the signal routing through all of the oldest compressors we could find and then when it came to that guitar solo what i wanted to do is i remember having the discussion with you Lee, and i said it needs to sound like you know like um cream sunshine of your love or it, it, it needs that old valvey you know proper sympathetic to you know sympathetic to the song kind of sound so you, you, originally the demo it was on a, an acoustic but then i thought the mix between you know your kind of that sound that we tried to create that kind of cream sound mm. and then with chuck's slide guitar you know just a little just a little bit cracking at the top at the top end and stuff I just think it because they they sound similar, but you kind of know that they're different. So it's it's almost like a schizophrenic solo. It's like in two the parts. The conversation, yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, you know, it's like the two parts of your brain talking to each other. You know, so I just it suddenly I, made it a conversation. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but but not too dissimilar. So you still know it's the same person. It, it, yeah. yeah. It, <laughs> It's, I like yeah, how it's, it's uh, you know, it's just, rooted just in mental think illness. It can't get any scarier or more discordant, you know, the other guitar part comes in and with the, or yeah. first it starts with Chuck solo, slow yeah. and keeping, and then all of a sudden it just explodes with something even fucking wackier. in the studio we, we 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 had these discussions kind of daily didn't we and and I, and I think you know once what if you have a if you have a sound rationale behind 
you know, why you need to do something and what that means to the song. I think it's always the right path, really. And you will end up getting what you, you know, what you want. You know, music, music's subjective, isn't it? it you know, it's what some people love, some people hate, what some people hate, some people love. But if you can kind of like be sympathetic to the song, then at least, you know, from our point of view, we're all, we've all been honest about it. We'll be like, right, you know, what does this mean? Why should it be there? Give me a reason why that should be there. And as long as there's a really good reason, you know, like the washy string, so you sound like, you know, sound like it's an ocean thing. You know, I mean, I always think there's a, there's a British um, contemporary classical composer called Gavin Bryars, who I love desperately. And he did. He's done a, a couple of great tracks. One was um, called Jesus Blood. You have to listen to it. And what he did was he there was a homeless guy in London, and it's just a tape loop of this homeless guy singing this quite religious song. And it lasts like thirty seconds, and then he just repeats and repeats. So Gavin Bryce built this whole symphony around it. It's just genius. <laughs> It's, it's called Jesus Blood by um, Gavin Bryce. But he also did um, uh, this tune about the Titanic, and what it lasted two minutes, 12, or, or two hours and 12 minutes, whatever it took for the Titanic to sink, from it hitting the thing to sinking. He wrote this piece of music from the perspective of those string guys who were on the deck. So it's just, and it's got these big sweepy strings in it, you know, and it just reminds you of the ocean, and it's that kind of sympathy to to the subject matter that kind of like really really pays off but i think you know from uh, from undertow's point of view those big sweepy strings make you think of the sea and they make you think of being lost at sea a bit like gavin bryas and titanic i think <laughs> although nowhere near as good because <laughs> he's like a genius but... beautiful yeah it turned out perfect so, so you, you 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 also directed the the promotional video the song as well yeah so tell us a little bit about where that was and, <laughs> and the people in the background well yeah uh, I, I mean again that's that's it's an awkward one because it's a bit weird isn't it really you look at it you just go you, you, when you when you first watch it it just kind of looks like an old kind of something old doesn't it again like you know like the song it sounds like something old but you kind of know it's not and then if you actually start watching the video, you're, you're saying, wait a minute, there's like a clown in the background. And then there's like girls in stockings and all sorts of weird stuff. But, and, and we actually recorded that. That was the day of your gig in York, wasn't it? At the venue. So like, I, I, I said to Matt, look, we, what we need to do is we just need to get very crazy kind of British people. A lot of people, British people are crazy. Let's round up friends of like the Black Skies who were your backing band. You know, uh, anyone you know, anyone I know, just get them in there. Let's get them all drunk. Just put a bottle of scotch yeah. on each table. Real, Let's real, get real, them all hammered. And then, yeah. and then just shoot Chuck and Leroy in the middle of it. And, and it kind of worked, didn't it? You know? Yeah, I, 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 I befriended a girl called Amy about three or four years ago, two mutual friends. And I knew she was a performer that did like fire breathing and all that stuff. And when you, you said to me, I need, I need some interesting, crazy people. I was like, well, she'll know a lot of people. So I said, oh, and she was, she can spread this message out. And then people just turn up dressed as clowns and like crazy stuff. And it was like, there's no purpose for this, but it's brilliant because it's, it's got a surreal. But, it, but if, you actually, if you actually sit and look at the video, like my, like my son, like he's 16, he was like, there's a stereo MCs poster on the in the background there, and I was like, "Wow, stereo MCs! It's a very British band, isn't it? You know, like it." So, you kind of there are little things that kind of give it away that you're not in America. Well, you have to carefully look, I think, you know, which is a good thing, really. I don't, yeah, I don't know how your fans will take it, but yeah, and it was shot in the Crescent Social Club, so it's a a, a Northern English social club. working man's club, yeah, which is a working the, man's club, the, yeah, the 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 people throughout from the 60s onwards would be would be playing they're the places that hold you know two three hundred people is for the working class guys to go and be entertained so those are the types of venues that back in the day the beatles may have played tom jones shirley bassey 
those are the types of places it would. So, uh, I, I, like we grew up in those kind of clubs, you know, yeah. that was that was what was Clubs around. Yeah, and that's what you get. My grand was a barmaid in one, my local one. So I used to go there like literally every weekend. You just see so much music in there, like like Matt said, you know. Awesome. Yeah. But I, yeah, I mean, I th I think all in all. With Undertow, and obviously because we recorded Streets of Aberdeen at the same time, and I know you've done a version of that before, so this is a, a kind of, a, I suppose, a British session version of the same song. But what I wanted to do with that was use the same instruments like the bagpipes, and, you know, the same recording technique, techniques and the same musicians and the same, you know, production team and stuff. So I, I think, you know, it'll be interesting to see it. This music is from the heart. That's all that matters, really. If, you know, you, there's so much stuff that's just churned out by machines or by people who don't really care. They care about a book as opposed to, you know, creating a masterpiece or a piece that you're going to, you know, die proud of. And I think what we've done is we've at, at least achieved, you know, that we've made something that we're all very proud of. I think from my point of view, anyway. Yeah. That's the point. Whether this it's is the greatest thing I've ever worked on. Success or not is, is irrelevant to it. It's it, it's something we're all proud of. I think, and it, it, it's a capture of a moment in time. Yeah. So, I listened to it about ten times yesterday. So. Did you really? <laughs> yeah. As opposed to me never listening to it again. But, but I, no, in, I, fact, in, in my defence, I'm now like now listening to more of your stuff working forward. So it's not like I'm like. I I love that. It, but, get it done and move on to the next thing that's yeah. a good way i like yeah. to bask in it a little bit i know i've listened to it i i got it in a, i got a cd with just that one song on it in my car and my cd <laughs> doesn't work all that great so it's like hit or miss if the cd player works but if that's i'm listening to, i put the cd on and it'll work for for a, a day or so and then it'll spit it back out so i blast it and i fact, miss I, cds in fact, I, I, I can't listen to it too much because it makes me want to drink and it kind of will send me <laughs> off into a, a, a world of whiskey. If I listen, if, if I listen to it too much, I get I get drawn into that whirlpool whiskey and I don't know what's going to happen. So, you know, maybe maybe I should put it behind me. <laughs> That's funny. I, I, I love CDs. I miss CDs. I, yeah, I can remember like. My, I used to have that Beatles album and I removed Yellow Submarine from it. Yeah, we cut the Beatles real. album because I hated yeah, Yellow Submarine, submarine so badly. Great album, just take that yeah, tune. Yeah. You removed it from Revolver. Yeah, I do remember that. I hate yeah. that song. So I had the album, like, I printed out the album cover and everything and just like removed that one track because I thought it was appalling. It should never have been on the album. <laughs> Yellow Submarine. That's one of my first experiences with music. Was oh singing my song in great. You, you can you can hear how depressed John Lennon is in the backing vocal. It sounds like he wants to like like hang himself. It's awful. <laughs> Let's not go there. <laughs> okay. Knob off all the Beatles fans. Like piano worms. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, right. Well, I, I mean, gr great to catch up. I think, you know, I, we look forward to the release as much as you do, I think. Um, yeah. And I think we're going to we're going to be very happy with what we've done, regardless of anything else. I'm, I hope your fans kind of accept that flying thousands of miles across you know, the Atlantic to record it here was a good idea because, you know, we 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 did it with sincerity and with our hearts so yeah. hopefully it's uh it's beautiful it shows yeah you know and 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 if they like it on them forward to the next one i think and we'll well historically the, the 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 passing backward and forward between america and england has gone on you know the rolling stones tried to be muddy waters you know elvis inspired the beatles you, you know what i mean it's gone on these things have gone on for, yeah. for, forever, you know, and you end up with bands like Fleetwood Mac, which is a mixture of the two, or it just goes from one to the other, to the other, to the other. So everyone else, in a kind of way, doesn't really exist in this this relationship between America and the UK. So us to try and approach, because country is not natural in England, but to try and approach what what we can do that is similar to country, 
then and bringing your outlaw country sound to it is that's the product of what it is so maybe cool. maybe it's old i don't know i i think they're gonna love it i think the fans are gonna love it i agree yeah let's hope so let's let well we're gonna find out soon aren't we <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's what it is. Yeah, Paul, I don't want to work with you ever again. <laughs> it's good. Everyone hates it. Yeah. Uh, no, it's just, no, 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 no. People love it. They're gonna love it. Uh, you, I, they're they're already the people I played it for are already loving it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, everybody that we've played it to, and um, like, because we have a big circle of musicians we work with, and they're all just like, wow. You know, like die for a song like that. It's just, and it's all about the song in it. Let's be honest. You know? 